So today we want to do a quick review about radicals. This is for Math 108. If we have a radical number that is not 0, and that's n, then we can define, and you guys probably remember radicals as something that looks like this. The nth root of a. This is called the index. And this is called the radicand. Here, A is. Um, a couple things that you might, uh, just to jog your memory, typically when we're working with square roots, the square root of 4, for example, we don't write the 2 here, but these two things are equal. So the index in that notation is 2. Um, the other thing about square roots is we can't take even roots of negative numbers. Or those are not real numbers anyway. So for example, the square root of negative 4 is not a real number. If you ever studied complex numbers, which we won't really use in this class, it's a complex number. And if you remember that, negative 4 is equal to 2i. But we won't really use complex numbers in this class. We have some properties we use on a regular basis with real numbers. Number 1, the nth root of a raised to the nth power is just a. Um, this looks like, for example, the cubed root of 7 cubed should just be 7. 2. The nth root of a to the nth power looks the same as when n is odd. When n is even, this is the absolute value of a. So an example here, example, is for example the cube root of negative 2 cubed, which is negative 8, is just negative 2. But down here an example like the square root of negative 2 squared is the absolute value of negative 2, it's positive 2. If you think about how you would probably do this, this is negative 2 squared, that would give you the square root of 4, and that's a positive 2. The third property that we use is the nth root of AB is equal to the nth root of A times the nth root of B. So an example of using this to simplify the square root of 200. Now when I simplify this, I'm looking for perfect squares that can factor out of this number. 100 is a perfect square, and I can factor 200 as 100 times 2. So this is the square root of 100 times the square root of 2. And that gives me 10 times the square root of 2. Can you guys try this um, example, please? Simplify the cubed root of 56x to the 8th power. So please pause the video, come back when you're done, and check your answer, and I'll work it here for you guys. So the first thing is to identify the perfect cubes that are inside 56. If you're not familiar with those, one way to do that is to 
factor this, that's 7 times 8, into its prime factorization. So 56 is 2 cubed times 7. This 2 cubed will come out because the cube root of something cubed will um, simplify. Um, the same idea holds for x to the 8th. I want to turn it or the pieces that will simplify are powers of 3, so x cubed will come out. There's a second x cubed, and then there's an x squared. These need to add up to um, 8 in order to simplify this. So the solution should look something like this. The cube root of 2 cubed times 7. And you can either write these separately, or x cubed times x cubed is x to the 6. And then I split out these pieces between the pieces that will simplify and the pieces that won't. This is 2x squared cubed root of 7x squared. Multiplying radicals. Um, so I use the same property here. The example that I have is simplify 4 square root of 3 times 7 square root of 12. When, and again, if you kind of remember this stuff, stop the video, go work this example, um, and then come back. When I work this, the idea is to combine like terms or multiply like terms, so to rearrange this to look like this. And then using the property that I just used, I can combine these under one square root. So this is 28 square root of 36, and the square root of 36 is just 6, and that should be 168. Um, dividing radicals, we use a fourth property. And that property is that if I have the nth root of some fractional amount, that I can split into two roots. So the example, simplify. square root of b cubed over 4a squared, a, sure, 4a squared. Um, in, I want to split this up. The denominator is a perfect square, so this is the square root of b cubed and the square root of 4a squared. Now, I don't know if a and b are positive, so when this a comes out, and really I'm using, let's split off these perfect squares. So I have a b squared times b, and this really splits like this. So when the b squared will come out, but again, this is an even root, so really it should come out as absolute value of b. 4 should come out as 2, and this should come out as the absolute value of a. Okay? Sometimes, in certain problems, you'll see this at the, in the instructions. Assume all variables are positive. Now, if that's true, if A is a positive number, then this simplifies the notation absolute value of A is A, and this thing here would be written like this. Let's see, b would be positive over 2a. No problem. Adding and subtracting radicals. Perhaps you remember we need the radicals to be um, similar radicals. Similar radicals have the same index and same radicand. And if that's true, you can add them together. Otherwise, you can try and do some manipulations to get that to be true. 
So an ex uh, example. So here, these are similar radicals. I have a square root in the first um, first term and a square root in the second term, and the radicand in both is 5. So I can add these together. To do that, you just add these coefficients, 3 plus 7, and it's 10 times the square root of 5. Sometimes you have to simplify first in order to add. So 2 times the square root of 18 minus 5 square roots of 32. Again, please try this one on your own and come back when you've done that. I'm going to simplify this. And I get 2 times the square root of 9, which is 3, times the square root of 2, minus 5, times the square root. Oops, I want to take out 16. And I have the square root of 2. So here I get 6 square roots of 2 minus 20 square roots of 2, or negative 14 times the square root of 2. Fractional exponents, oops, I think there's a typo right here, and as long as a is a real number and all roots exist, then for any rational number, we have this um, connection between this nth root of a to the nth power is the nth root of a to the nth power is a to the m over n. So examples. 3 to the 1 half power is the same thing as 2, the in, that index comes out front, and the 1 goes in here, which we would typically write like this. Um, I want to do one more example. Write with rational exponents. And that's the square root of x cubed y squared. That should be the same thing as x cubed y squared to the 1 half power. And then I can use all of those rules I know from exponents to distribute this 1 half. And then get x to the 3 halves, y to the first power as the final solution. I want to rationalize denominators in order to move them. This is how we really divide by rational numbers, ra um, radicals. So here's what I'm, when I have a single term here, a single um, radical in the denominator. It can go like this. I just multiply by that same term the number of times that the index is. So here the index is 2, so I need two copies in order to bring that out. So I get 5 square roots of 7. This is the square root of 7 times the square root of 7, which is the square root of 49 or you should just recognize this is 7. When I have two terms in the denominator, I have to multiply by the conjugate. And that is the same thing as what's in the denominator, but with a plus instead of a minus. You change this sign. So if this was a plus, you would change it to minus. And then distribute. This is 5 times 2 plus the square root of 6. And you have to FOIL this out. So 
So I get 10 plus 5, square roots of 6. When you FOIL, the first term is 4. The uh, outer term is 2 square roots of 6, and the inner term, those outer and inner terms will cancel. This is the square root of 6 times the square root of 6, which is just 6. So you should get a real number in the denominator if you have chosen the right conjugate. over negative 2. Okay, please let me know if you have any questions.